Welcome to the LPL brief again. Uh, I did one of these yesterday when I talked about QG Reapers. Basically, the purpose of this LG LPL brief is to go through the teams that I discussed with Andy Del Rey in the LPL episode, in the China Talk episode, that didn't record very well. The first team I talked about, QG Reapers, they're doing really well. The second team I'm going to talk about today is LGD Gaming. Week 2 just finished for LGD Gaming. There is a set of games tomorrow, but those are going to be Group B games, and LGD is in Group A. They have yet to win a series. They won one game against Snake. They got completely trampled by WE, and they got completely destroyed by QG Reapers. First, I'm going to talk a little bit about my feelings about LGD going into the split, where I sort of felt that they would do, or what I thought that they were doing. I wrote an article called Escaping LG Depression, where I talked about how the addition of Heart, the change from TBQ to Amy, and the addition of Marin, they all look like good changes on paper. For example, uh, Marin, MVP of Worlds. How can adding him to your roster be bad, right? A big problem LGD suffered last year was just a lack of a consistent presence of a coach. So even though Hart is inexperienced, you get a feeling that he might be able to lend something to the team that they don't already have, or at least consistently work with the team, so they have some sort of authoritative presence there. Finally, Amy for TBQ. TBQ and Amy have shown similar weaknesses in the LPL and their games, where they have a tendency to be too overzealous or too aggressive and have really questionable decision making in some parts, but with multiple voices on LGD, maybe that can help with Amy a little bit. TBQ was already kind of hardened, he was doing his own thing, he was operating on his own will in some cases, but maybe Amy could be molded better. And he has shown a higher mechanical skilling than TBQ. So all of these ideas, theoretically they look pretty good. Uh, in my article, I discussed how they could also falter quite a bit. Marin, MVP of Worlds, he was very reliant on pressure from Bengi to do well. Looking at the jungle pathing by Loyota the Dragon, something I talked about summon on Summoning Insight, where Bengi would go top 50% of first ganks. So every single game, of all the actions he could take, which include uh, farming, ganking his own jungle, ganking mid, ganking bottom, he chose to gank top 50% of the time. And this was earlier on in 2015, so before the top carry meta became really big. And if you watch the SK Telecom games, Bengi was probably ganking top more than 50% of the time. So the Dragon did a similar analysis of LGD gaming, looking at TBQ's pathing during playoffs, out of all the times that he ganked, so not just for gank first ganks, but in general, he went top lane 5% of all actions he could have taken. Marin, when he performed poorly, we saw that he wasn't doing well because either the enemy jungler would come or he would just straight up lose the top laner. This happened at MSI. This happened in the one series they lost to CJ. So when you're looking at it in that sense, Marin doesn't necessarily seem like the perfect fit. You also have to remember that people have really, really short memories. People are talking about Marin like he's the best Rumble player to ever play the game now. Do you remember what it was like to watch Acorn when he was Chianju and he had those crazy massive ults where he could just like 3v1 on turret, all these other performances? Acorn is a really, really solid Rumble player and in my mind he's still the best Rumble player to ever play the game. Flame, both really, really solid players, and they were considered in really strong form when they came to China. Probably had as good of a reputation as Marin, just in, in different types of their style, when they came to China, and they did poorly at Worlds. So the idea that putting a good player in is going to necessarily improve the roster one-to-one, -one, or that that player will necessarily perform the same way on the same team, doesn't make the most sense. So... I kind of predicted that Marin might not look that great on the new LGD. The The other thing with Amy is that if you still have the same problems with decision making, you really, really need your team to be very communicative. And I felt like since Worlds, LGD gaming just hasn't been communicative. Co TSM's coach, um, Jarge, made the comment that he felt like there was no shot calling. LGD used to have really great proactive shot calling during the regular season and the playoffs in LPL. They had the shortest average game times, the highest rate of roaming with their support. They 
and it ended up taking turrets really quickly. They amassed the largest gold lead at 20 minutes and win. So LGD used to be a very proactive team in the LPL. Suddenly they go to Worlds. Suddenly they go to Intel Extreme Masters. <laughs> Suddenly they go to a bunch of all-season tournaments and they're not advancing past the round at which they enter the tournament. They're not making proactive plays. They're just kind of sitting there and it looks like there's no shot calling. It looks like there's no conversation on the team. And someone who went to the venue for LPL actually told me that being around LGD, it just, yeah, they weren't talking, they weren't saying anything, to be honest, in game. So that's very troubling. So if you have a player who has the same decision making flaws as TBQ, he's not going to improve or be a direct upgrade, even if he's mechanically skilled, if you still have these communication errors. Finally, heart. Uh, the idea of having a consistent coach, regardless of experience, doesn't necessarily make sense. Firefox, uh, LGD's analyst turned coach, received a lot of criticism at Worlds for not being experienced, not being able to draft well, all these other operations. I think LGD, there was this idea that he didn't participate in draft at all just because he wasn't intelligent or didn't have anything to say. Firefox, most people who have talked to him have said that he has a very good sense of game knowledge. He has good ideas. When LGD were doing well in playoffs, they actually said that he came up with most of their draft strategies. I think LGD just have very strong personality, so that if they don't want your input in draft or anything like that, they probably won't take it, even if you give it. I get the feeling since Imp pretty much only plays in whatever tournament he wants to play, he has claimed injury or illness coincidentally during off-season tournaments almost on a consistent basis and just gets away with it. Uh, Wayless has been known for having issues in scrims by other teams. They've said that LGD, you know, they lose scrims frequently because they don't take scrims as seriously. They've said these things publicly. Wayless has publicly made comments about how he more or less intentionally fed in scrims and his team would still win anyway things of this nature just the attitude and approach to scrims seem to suggest that the management isn't necessarily enforcing the best um, club ethic so if you come in as a coach no matter what kind of coach you are or how good or skilled of a coach you are you're not going to necessarily be able to assert authority right away or synergize with your team right away or enforce what you want to enforce right away this is true of Firefox, I think this is true of Heart right now as well. So, you look at LGD's drafts, they're not necessarily better. Firefox is gone, who do you blame now? Do you blame Heart? Is he also just an idiot? I, I don't understand, so I think that you have to look more systemically at the team when you do that. In general, I think that the biggest problem with LGD right now is going to be the communication. There's a very obvious communication breakdown. They aren't making proactive plays. They aren't making uh, creative moves. In the mid game or late game when they get caught out or they do a strange skill shot or they miss something or they initiate without the rest of their team nearby, all of these are symptoms of miscommunication. When an entire team, every single player on an entire team starts playing poorly, it rarely is just because of one team member or because uh, one teammate is to blame or that the players just suddenly were attacked by skill vampires in the middle of the night as Thorin likes to use the analogy. It usually is something more systemic to do with the environment or to do with the communication in game from the team and I think that this is something that's actually really the problem with LGD right now. I don't know how to fix it because it feels like it's been something that's plaguing them since the world championship. You can go so far as to say that Orahan uh, tilted LGD into disaster. Really disappointing when you think about it because all of these players are extremely talented. Um, Marin, very talented. I talked about how his style might not mesh, but that doesn't make him less talented. Uh, we, Wayless, actually quite honestly very talented. If you only watched him at Worlds, you're doing him a disservice. And, well, okay, if you are only watched him at Worlds and don't really care, you're not doing him a disservice, but if you are only watched him at Worlds and you're talking about how terrible he is, you are doing him a disservice. You should go back and watch some of his VODs and see what he was like before. Imp. Everyone believes Imp is a great player. He's been a great player for a really long time, and this year, toward the end of playoffs, he legitimately looked like the best AD carry in the world. 
PYL. He is very mechanically gifted, a very strong player. If you watched how his games went, I think that his plays in terms of either keeping the lane or roaming were really, really instrumental in the way that LGD worked. So it wasn't just his game sense or his shot calling, but just the, his ability to execute that was very strong. So all of these players are really, really great players. <laughs> if you if you look at these games and you say that Marn and Imp are in prison and they should find a better team because all the Chinese players they're playing with are terrible, you should probably re-examine some of the plays that Imp and Marin make. Sometimes Imp is just not present in fights, sometimes he's just on the side waves farming and not doing anything, or sometimes he gets picked off. Uh, Marin, he's had some really, really questionable Morgana plays. He's fallen in behind in lanes. In the first game today against WE, when he played Nar against Fiora, he actually got a pretty easy early first blood, right, with the help of a misplay from 957 in the jungle, and he was ahead in CS for a while, but slowly 957 found a way back in, and WE just overall as a unit was more effective that game. 957 was more effective that game. Not a single player. Saying that TBQ, the change out for TBQ to Amy, probably Amy is the one who's being blamed the most right now as a terrible jungler because he's not doing anything. Again, if your jungler isn't doing anything, it's probably because there's no communication. A lot of times jungle communication works this way. It's like, can I go gank your lane? Do you need help? Or the laners will actually say, I need help. Or um, there's no idea of where the enemy jungler is, so you can't set up these ganks or plays because no one is keeping vision on them or no one is uh, making an observation when they see the enemy jungler. So making a play as a jungler when your team isn't talking is actually extremely difficult. If a team is completely shut down communication-wise, it's going to look the worst for the jungler. I think that Amy... Uh, yes, he's had some terrible decision-making errors, but he's me been mechanically skilled enough to qualify for the LPL twice. He has a fair amount of promise that could be developed, I think. So, I don't think Amy is on the same level as the other players on this roster right now. No, that's, that's absolutely true, but I do think that he's an upgrade over TBQ, and... If you look at LGD's decline, it started to happen when TBQ was still on the team. And if you look at where TBQ is now on OMG, he's not really performing well. He just played a series against RNG, so it's not like suddenly TBQ is making this other team better or whatever. I mean, I don't really see at it all. It's, it's not down to Amy. It's not that the team still has problems with coaches. It's not that the team still has problems with their jungler. It's not that all their Chinese players just suck. I really think the only conclusion that makes sense holistically that you're not kind of carving out or doing mental gymnastics to sort of blame one person or one aspect is to say that there's a huge systemic breakdown of communication within the team. How do you solve that? I really have no idea. It's really depressing because if it is a single player, I think a lot of people are inclined to want to blame a single player because you can replace that player and suddenly the team is more active again. But they actually replaced two members of the team, right? And it's the problem is persisting. So you can't just replace players and fix this type of problem unless you completely start over with a new roster. I think that's possible. Uh, do I advise that? Because it's really disappointing for the, the players right now? Not necessarily. I think maybe if you split up the current LGD and they find new teams or and you hire an entirely new roster of rookies for LGD, Maybe that's a feasible solution, but it's not something that will happen this spring. I really, um, I know some teams in China do have psych psychological coaches, so that might be something that they would look into, but this is really honestly just disappointing for fans of any player, right? Marn fans, Amy fans, Acorn fans, Heart fans. Uh, imp fans, PYL fans, Wayless fans. Uh, I really get frustrated a little bit when people like to point to a single player because if it were a single player's fault, then replacing that player would fix it. Maybe, maybe if it, it is Wayless who has problems in scrims or the communication is shutting down, then maybe replacing Wayless is possible? I have no idea though because I don't know where the source of the communication error is coming from. Potentially something that you could do in game is if there is a player that's having trouble, if there is a player that's tilting or causing communication to shut down, if you have a personality like PYL who 
has been described the way Skara describes Hai. He isn't necessarily a commanding shot caller or a dogmatic team captain. He's the kind of captain who will translate the information in terms of this guy needs this, or I get this feeling that we should do this from the way this player is acting, or understanding or relaying communication, making it make sense across the team, keeping the team talking, this kind of shock caller, this kind of team captain. So what a personality like PYL can do is reach out to a player who's tilting or upset and say, what can we do to make your game easier? Do you want me to come mid? We can leave Imp here. He likes to farm anyway, and, you know, Amy and I can pinch her and gank mid. Then we can all go top and get Marin ahead. This type of thing is a possible solution to their problems if it is a single player who's tilting and bringing the entire system down. I have no idea if that's true or not, but that would be a place to start. Anyway, good luck to LGD. I really think these players are skilled. I'd like to see them performing well again in the LPL, but for now, uh, this is just the state of, state of the team and the way it is.